In this lesson, we are going to talk about relations. What are relations? So first, we are considering two sets, A and B. Let's say this is your set A and this is your set B. We are going to define a relation between the two sets A and B. How? By creating this Cartesian product. A cross B and let us recall that the that the elements of A cross B will be the set of ordered pairs from wherein the first coordinate belongs in A and the second coordinate belongs in B. Now if we get two arbitrary elements in A and B, so let's say this is A, this is B, we say that they are related. So A R B we read this as a is related to B whenever the ordered pair AB is an element of R. So you just think of it as a short way, you think of this as a short way of writing AB in R. Now in the case wherein the sets A and B are the same or they are equal, we say that R is a relation on A. So remember when we have R is a relation on A, it actually means that your set R is a subset of A cross A because the elements of R are ordered pairs. Let us consider this example. So suppose we have 1, 2, 3, that's the our set A and our set B is X, Y, Z. The set R here in this case is the set containing two elements only, 1, Y and 3, X. So therefore, we say that 1 is related to y because 1y is an element of r and we also say that 3 is related to x. 3 is related to x and we can also say that 3 is not related to z because 3z is not in r. Okay? Now, suppose that our A and B is the set of natural numbers. So we have a relation on N, the set of natural numbers. Let's look what this is saying. The set of or ordered pairs such that A minus B is equal to 2. So this is saying that A will only be related to B if A is bigger than B by so, just to look at some points here, we say that 7, 5, 7, 5 is in R. Because 7 minus 5 is equal to 2, so we also write it as 7 is related to 5. But if we have 5, 7, 5, 7 is not in R because 5 minus 7 is equal to negative 2, and it's not equal to 2. So... So, 5 is not related to 7. Okay, next. Let us consider example 3. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is our set A and B is the power set of A. Let us recall the power set contains all the subsets of A. Now, we define a relation from A to B using the following set of ordered pairs. Now, look at this one. This is a relation from A to B. So therefore, the first coordinate here is an element of capital A. So it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Whereas the X here is an element of B. So therefore, X here is a subset of A. So remember that this one here is an element of A. This one here, the X here is a subset of A. Let us look at again what this is saying. We can write this as AX is in R if and only if A is an element of X. So, for example, um, 2 is an element of the set 2, 3. So, therefore, the ordered pair 2 and then 2, 3 is in R. Or 
we say that 2 is related to the set 2, 3. So we can replace this element notation by R because that is what's happening here. We are o They will be related if the first number here is an element of the subset here. From this point on, we will be considering relations on a set A. So meaning to say we are um, relating A to itself. Okay? So this means that R is a subset of A cross A. First, we say that R is reflexive if A is related to A for all A and A. Now, notice here the importance of the quantifiers. For reflexive, what is this saying? If you get any element in A, it will always be related to itself. Okay? Now, when R is symmetric, what is happening here? Look at, let's look at the quantifiers for all A, B, and A. So meaning to say you are getting two arbitrary elements in A. And if it so happens that A and B, A is related to B, then we must have that B is related to A. So parang balik taran. Next, what about if R is transitive? It is transitive whenever if we get three arbitrary elements in in a and then this condition hap this condition happens if a is related to b and b is related to c then a must be related to c so it's like transitivity just like with transitivity of equality right they will be it's like a chain a is related to b so i will draw a like a segment there to indicate that there is a that they are related. A is related to B, B is related to C. So therefore, A must be related to C. Next, we say that R is antisymmetric if for any two arbitrary elements in A. What is this saying? If A is related to B and B is related to A, then it will automatically imply that they must be equal. So, anti-symmetric means that you cannot find A, B being related and B, A being related with A not equal to B. So, there is no such, so this is saying there is no such A, B. So, this cannot happen. Okay? Notice that this is the negation of this one. Okay? So if you're anti-symmetric, you cannot find two, what is this saying? You cannot find two distinct elements wherein they are related and you're just interchanging them and then they are still related. You cannot find that in an anti-symmetric relation. Before we move on to the examples, um, it is very important that we write the negations of the property. So I have already written here the, the definition and then we are now ready to negate. Again, let us recall you are reflexive whenever for all A and A, A must be related to itself. We always remember the importance of the quantifiers. All of them are for all statements. They are all they involve universal quantifiers. So again for reflexive you're getting one element in A. For the symmetric property you're getting two arbitrary elements. So that's why you have for all A B. For transitivity you're getting three elements in A and for anti-symmetric you are getting two elements of A. Alright, what is now the negation of reflexivity for all A becomes there exists an A in A such that A is not related to itself. Next, R is not symmetric. When we negate this, there exists two elements in A such that what is the negation of an implication? To negate an implication, that means the premise is true, but 
the conclusion is false. So we have A is related to B, but B is not related to A. Next, R is not transitive whenever we have for all A becomes there exist. And then again, the negation of an implication is that this is true, but the conclusion is false. There exists A and B such that A is related to B and B is related to C and A is not related to C. Well, actually, I can remove the parenthesis here because and is associative. But anyway, just for you to see that, I was just getting the negation of this one. Next, the negation of anti-symmetric. So it will be there exist two elements in A such that, again, the negation of an implication, copy the premise, then negate the conclusion. So we will see more of this in these definitions in the following examples. Now let us consider the equality relation on the set of complex numbers. Let us check which of the four properties hold for this relation. So in this case, we say that, so let me just write the relationship for any A, B, and C. We say that A is related to B whenever a is equal to B. So we are saying that our relation is the equality relation. Now, I have here the definition of the reflexivity, symmet symmetric property, transitive, and anti-symmetric. We will just have to write it in terms of the equality relation. For the, for the first one, is it Symmetric is the equality relation symmetric? Yes, because I will just write it in terms of for all A, we're now in C. A is equal to A, correct? And then for the symmetric property, for all A, B, and C, for any two complex numbers, if A is equal to B, then B is equal to C. Again, notice that I am just replacing all the R's here by equality because that is the relation that we are talking about. And I am replacing A here by C because that is the set that we are discussing. And for transitivity, for all A, B, C, and C, A equals B and B equals C, then A must be equal to C. And for anti-symmetric, let's check. For two elements in C, if A equals B and B equals C, uh, and B equals A, then A must be equal to B. Yes, this is true, right? Okay, so we're done with our first example. The relation that we are considering is the less than relation. And this is the relation on the set of real numbers. So this is our A. So we are defining for all A, B, and R, we say that A is related to B whenever A is less than B. Let's check again which of the four properties hold for this relation. So let, let me just replace this. So for all A in R, okay, so we have A is less than A. Is this true? Definitely this is false. But how do we say, why do we say that this is false? Because the negation is true. What's the negation again here? There exists an A in R such that A is not less than A. And actually, what is this? What is that? Actually, all real numbers. For all real numbers, that will, that will be true, but it suffices to, to give one example. So we can take A to be equal to 1. 1 is not less than itself, right? 
Next, let's check for symmetric. Is it symmetric? Is it true that if A is less than B, then B is less than A? Definitely that is false. Now, notice that since all of these properties are, uh, this all, all of the definitions of the four properties here are for all statements, in order to show that it is false, all you have to do is to give me a counter example. I will leave it to you to give me a counter example to show that the statement is false. Next, for transitivity, let me just um, write it using this way for three elements in C. If A is less than B and B is less than C, is it true that A is less than C? Yes, that is true. Is it anti-symmetric? So is it true that if A is less than B and B is less than C, is it true that A is equal to B? Definitely, that is false. Sorry, this one should be A. B is less than A. All right. So for the less than relation, only one property is satisfied, the transitivity property. Next, let's look at example 4. Let us define a relation R on A. Our A is set containing 4 elements only. The set containing 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's see whether it is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, but not anti-symmetric. For reflexivity, that means that for all A, it's very important that you memorize the definition by heart. A must always be related to itself. So this one is saying A, A is in R. But notice here, so you have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 4, 4. All of them are in R. So therefore, R is reflexive. Next, let's check that it is really symmetric. Again, let me write the definition. For any two arbitrary elements in A, if A is related to B, then we must have that B is related to A. Let me just write it in terms of ordered pairs. So if I have A, B in R, we should have that B, A must be in R. We should, we should be able to switch it. Now, if we look at this one, 1, 2, is there a 2, 1? Yes. Let me write it down. So we have 1, 2, and 2, 1. These are elements of R. So we're done with this. And then 1, 3. There is a 3, 1. Then, of course, 2, 2, when we switch it around, it's already 2, 2. So that's already taken care of. 2, 3, I have a 3. And... That's it, right? So all of these are in R. So therefore, it is symmetric. Let's check for transitivity. What is that saying for all A, B, C? In A, we should have that if A is related to B and B is related to C, then A must be related to C. We have to find pairs wherein they are they have this they share the common second coordinate here and then first coordinate here they should be the same so so if we look at one one here it ends with one and then we should look at all the ordered pairs which start with one and we only have one two and one three. So first let's start with one one and one two. So we have one 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 two then one two must be in R. Yes, one two is already here. We have one 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 three. One three is in R. So take note it the correct way should be one one is in R. It's just that I already this is just for brevity. What else? So we have already considered that. Let's check um, 1, 2. So this one, it ends in 2. 
So let's look at the pairs which start with 2. So we have 2, 1, and 2, 2. So 1, 2, and 2, 1. Do we have a... So again, 1, 2, and 2, 1. Do we have a 1, 1? Yes. And then we have 1, 2, and 2, 2. So do we have a 1, 2? Yes, it's already here. 1, 2. We have 1, 2, and 2, 3. Do we have a 1, 3? Yes, we have a 1, 3 over there. Now, I leave it up to you to check for the others. Let's check for anti symmetric property the example already tells us that it is not anti-symmetric let us look at again the definition of not anti-symmetric this will mean that we can find two elements a and b wherein a b is related b a is related but the two of them are not the same it's very easy to see that in our example so for instance we have one two and two one right they are related one two one is related to two two is related to one but two is not equal to one right two distinct elements wherein you can interchange them if you can see something like this then that means that your your relation is not anti-symmetric so all we have to do is to give a counter example so therefore let's take one two and two one so both of them are in r but one is not equal to two for our last example, suppose that we have a non-empty set U and we are considering our relation to be a relation on the set S and the set S is the power set of U. So the reason why I used U here is that this is my universal set. Okay, so this one, power set of U, it contains all possible subsets of U. Okay, let us define a relation on S. Remember, relation on S means that R is a subset of S cross S. So we are relating two subsets of U. Okay, we are relating two subsets of U. So that's why we have this here. A is related to B if and only if A is a subset of B. So our relation here is the subset relation let us check again which of the properties hold so my relationship here is a is related to b if and only if a is a subset of b of course you have a quantifier there for all a and b subsets of u so let me just write it now here in this case so it will be for all a element of s remember s is a power set is the power set of u is it true that a is a subset of a yes that is true is it symmetric for all a b in s if a capital a is a subset of b is it true that b is a subset of a, of course, this is false. So exercise, give a counter example. For transitivity, is it true that if we take three arbitrary sets, notice I am already, I am using capital letters here because what we have are sets, all right? If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. That is true. And is it anti-symmetric? Let's check. For all A, B, and S, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then a is equal to B. Yes, this is true, right? That is our definition. That, that is actually what we do when we are showing that two sets are equal.